Dry needling involves the insertion of a single filament needle into a muscle or tendon that a patient perceives as painful. And it's been shown to improve muscle function as well as uh, decrease pain. When we look and we assess people, there's kind of the most basic ideas. There's three layers of tissue there. So you've got the superficial level where the skin kind of resides and that starts to move and it should move pretty freely. Underneath that, that intermediate level of tissue, that's more of your muscle tissue. And that's where you start to get into some of the fibers and the trigger points. And then there's the deep layer of tissue, which is underneath that and it's muscular and kind of goes down to the bone. When we're deciding if dry needling is an appropriate treatment for you, we start out with just a basic palpation and look at how you respond to that palpation. If we can push on a muscle and recreate your symptoms, chances are working with that muscle either with our hands or with dry needling will help to improve it. Once we've treated you a few times with our hands, we can then use that to make an assessment on do we think we need a more potent treatment. In my experience, dry needling tends to be a more intense version of the hands-on myofascial techniques and soft tissue mobilizations that we commonly perform in physical therapy. So if you're only noticing a day or two worth of relief from your symptoms with your hands-on treatment, we can try dry needling and see if that piggybacks and gives you a more effective treatment that lasts a little bit longer and helps you to perform your exercises and your common daily movements in a much more normal loading pattern that we would expect. So we'll take the needle and we will directly insert it into the muscle and move it around until we find either a twitch response or some cramping. And that indicates to us that we've found a trigger point that would benefit from the dry needling. When you have a trigger point, what we think happens is those fibers start to kind of knot up a little bit and they overlie in each other in a very uneven pattern, almost like pickup sticks on the ground. And when we poke it with that dry needle, it causes a change in that muscle and somehow those muscle fibers actually start to realign better and that trigger point starts to release. After that, we give them a couple of days to recover, make sure that everything settles down, and then reassess how they move and see if that made an impact in their tension or in their movement patterns so that we can assess how much that myofascial tightness or those trigger points were contributing to their symptoms. Ideally, as we do more and more dry needling, you start to see that cumulative effect and those muscles and those trigger points do start to go away. Patients more commonly will report after the first time it feels a little bit nicer and it doesn't bother them as much. It's not quite as sore and achy afterwards, so they're much more comfortable with it. And as we do it repeatedly, that tension should actually go away. When it's done in conjunction with a good home exercise program to re-educate the patient and how they move, it works very potently to help control that tension and get you reloading your body in ways that we were hoping to load up those joints to take stress and relief symptoms. The application of dry needling uh, is pretty wide. and and that's one of the benefits of it because there's very low risk of any adverse reactions occurring to it. So anyone with musculoskeletal pain could benefit from dry needling.